Ah, poke your toe. Good morning. Time to get our things a little bit organized this morning to share as widely as we can as we spend a little time reflecting together. Hope you got some rest. Getting some rest is a start. Good rest is even better. Easier said than done during this time, huh? It is for me anyway. Doing okay, but not resting overly well. Hmm. So we're live and waiting for people. Good to say hello and to see your hellos. Richard, I appreciate your note. Maybe we'll find a way as we build the PowerPoint about these different aspects of our personality to share them a little more widely. But mainly, it's just good to be together this morning. Boker Tov and good morning. It's wonderful to be here together again this morning with this uh, Sinai Streams Boker Tov morning, an opportunity Boker Tov moment, a time for us each day to reflect, to connect, and to remember. And uh, this morning, here on this fourth of Sivan, as we get uh, closer and closer to Shavuot, to the time of the giving of Torah, and the time where Historically, as it's described in Parashat Kitabo in the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Devarim, uh, chapter 26, uh, that we would go on a journey. We would take a tenet, a basket, and place those things that we were able to create this year and to offer the first of them as that which we are contributing rather than that which we, we are taking for ourselves. And so as we get ready to receive Torah, um, and to celebrate our tradition at the same time, I hope we're really spending some time in these days thinking about uh, what is it that we can put in our proverbial basket? Uh, what is it that each of us has uh, that we can offer, not merely in general, um, but uh, what is that special uh, purpose and role that each of us can fulfill that says, wow, I did my part here. Uh, I hope and uh, pray today for each of us uh, that we find that journey a little more clearer and our steps a little firmer as we make our way toward Shavuot and toward the proverbial Mount Sinai. Uh, I find it helps and I hope it helps each of us uh, this morning to uh, just have a few prayers that reflect on uh, the miracle that we've already experienced today because our eyes are open and here we are together. And so please join me in the translation of Asher Yatsar. Blessed eternal God, creator of the universe, you have fashioned our bodies with wisdom, creating within us a finely balanced network. To stand before you in prayer is itself a fragile miracle. Eternal God, we praise you as the healer of body and spirit. And now uh, for the wonder that is Torah, Let's join together with Shavuot coming today in the Hebrew and the English. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav V'tzipanu L'asok B'divrei Torah, Barevna Adonai Eloheinu, Etivrei Toratcha B'finu, V'lofi Amcha Beit Yisrael, Ani Anachnu V'tzetzeinu, V'tzetzei Amcha Beit Yisrael, Kulanu Yodei Shemecha, V'lomdei Toratcha L'ishma, Baruch Ata Adonai, Blessed eternal God, creator of the universe, 
you sanctify our lives with mitzvot and command us to engage in Torah study. Eternal our God, may your words of Torah be sweet to us. Let every generation, young and old, the whole family of Israel come to know you through the study of Torah for its own sake. Eternal God, we praise you as the teacher of Torah to the people of Israel. And as this week our focus is so much on the receiving of and the study of Torah, this next passage is in our liturgy because once we say the blessing for Torah study, we're supposed to then study uh, a traditional text immediately. And this one um, really is the social Jewish Ten Commandments. We read the traditional Sarah Tadibot, the Ten Utterances or Ten Commandments, on Friday morning at our service. Um, but these Ten Commandments are really the fabric of our lives. And maybe as we read them, we can look how each of them we might uh, turn to at least one of them in a special way today. These are the obligations whose value cannot be measured. They nourish us in this world and help us to create the world to come. Kibud av va'em, to honor father and mother. Ugmilut chasadim, to perform acts of love and kindness. Ahashkamat be'er ha'midrash shafarit v'arvit, to attend the house of study morning and evening. Vahachnasat orchim, to welcome the stranger. Uvikur cholim, to visit the sick. Vahachnasat kala, to provide for brides and grooms. Ulevayat hamet, Keep faith with the dead, viunt fila to pray with sincerity, baba at shalom ben adam lachavero to make peace when there is strife, the tamud Torah keneged kulam, and the study of Torah is equal to them all. Of course, the study of Torah doesn't in any way replace some of these uh, holy actions, but so our tradition reminds us, it informs them, it gives us that wonderful opportunity. For each of us not merely to act, but uh, to act in a way that is significant and meaningful for each of us. And so as we gather here together on this fourth of Sivan, uh, we continue uh, making our 13 steps, although we're going to take many more than 13 days to do so, uh, 13 steps to better ourselves. Uh, and hopefully we'll uh, continue to remember these. Uh, they come from Sefer Cheshbon HaNefesh, from the book called Accounting of the Soul, uh, by Menachem Mendel Levine of uh, Satanov. And for those uh, who weren't maybe with us yesterday, uh, here's a little bit of uh, information about him. Uh, he was uh, very uh, traditionally educated and at the same time educated in the ways of the Enlightenment. Uh, living in those years, as you saw, and a full description of him and his work is found in the YIVO Encyclopedia at the uh, link that you see on the bottom of your screen. But he challenged us to consider 13 different aspects of ourselves we might work on. And the first one uh, is right here. Uh, and so today we're going to think about what's called in English equilibrium. But I really prefer the Hebrew term that he offers for this instead. He says that what each of us needs to work on, among other things, is menuchat hanefesh, um, is that we need to work on a sense of rest of the soul. Um, that equilibrium sounds like balance, where we're running in every different direction, but at least those directions are balanced. But that is in fact not the goal. The goal is a sense of appropriate and informed calm. Now for each of these 13 characteristics that he's going to share with us that we'll add one to the next, um, he creates a simple statement, a one sentence explanation that we might say it, repeat it, hold on to it, and have it with us to help us strengthen ourselves as we make our way through our day. And so the first one he offers for Menuchat HaNefesh for equilibrium is as follows. Rise above small events, whether good or bad, that are not worth throwing off your spiritual equilibrium. I think there's a lot in that very small statement. Uh, he's not suggesting that we wander through our life um, placidly accepting everything that happens around us. Um, fear, excitement, um, all of those uh, responses that we have to our world are real and important. 
they sometimes strengthen us, they sometimes protect us. Um, we uh, need that mixture of the mind and the body and the soul, uh, of the emotion uh, with intention and perspective. We need all of those together in order for us to find that meaningful path that we seek. But one of the things he suggests is that our ability, our um, soul that uh, is the higher part of our being, that reminds us of significance and purpose, um, is like a, a, a light, is like a, a bright light at the top of our being. And when we are aligned together, um, with that light shines brightly for us and shows us um, important uh, insights into our path ahead. Uh, some days with all the things going on, it's like it shines against a disco ball, just scattered, shining in every direction. Um, and one of the things that fractures that light, as he describes it, um, are when we give too much importance to small events, very important that he says, whether good or bad. Um, it, I couldn't help, as I thought of this phrase that he shares with us, to think about the way in which what we call the news media functions. Um, sometimes some of the information that is offered to us there is extremely important. Um, and yet with the advent now well-established of the 24-hour news cycle that constantly um, the news business is there providing us with information. It seems that in addition to providing us that significant information, it also takes these small events, small hints, especially in a fearful way, but sometimes in a positive way as well, and raises them to a level at which they do not belong. And so spending too much time um, staring at these events in fact, throws off, in my opinion, our spiritual equilibrium. I heard a, a speaker at a, an event at, uh, at uh, Kellogg's School of Management at Northwestern in Chicago a number of years ago, um, who, um, when he was ta talking about the importance of having reflective time in our lives, that if we want to live the kind of life um, that we can lead, that we need time to think. We need time to reflect. And he said the first thing to do is to turn off the television much more. We distract ourselves too much. And when someone asked him, well, what about the news? He said, think about it a minute. How much news is there on the news? And uh, as I've watched it occasionally, because I really don't watch TV news with any frequency, um, nor do I watch videos at length on other devices, I really check in once, maybe twice a day, to make sure whether there is a significant event or issue of which I need to be aware. But too much attention then takes these small events um, and it raises them uh, to a much higher pitch. And as a result, we lose focus on what matters. Uh, this time is such a challenging time, uh, these times of viral outbreak. And I've talked to so many people about their upset, speaking here in Toronto, uh, about the massive gathering in the park last weekend, where um, people clearly lost their equilibrium, where people forgot that um, what we need to focus on is not that things might be opening up a little, or as if something significant uh, in our safety or our ability to protect ourselves has changed, but that in fact, um, social distance is the key to protecting others and protecting ourselves. Um, but when we uh, lose focus on that, somehow we find that we're able um, to behave in a way that can endanger others, endanger ourselves, uh, or make it that much harder for our society to get back on a strong and stable and healthy path. Um, this viral outbreak is not a small event, um, and yet, in order to make our way through it together, uh, we do need to maintain our sense of equilibrium, to get neither too high nor too low in any particular moment or day 
but two, as it says, and we'll conclude this part of our reflection with these words, you can join with me in them if you wish, to rise above small events, whether good or bad, that are not worth throwing off our spiritual equilibrium. Um, no one of these uh, insights that uh, Rabbi uh, Levine of Satanov offers is um, whole by itself. Rather, it's a system of things that we might consider and balance and focus on at different moments in different days. But I'm glad that we've uh, started a bit of this journey together this morning, and I look forward to building on it and continuing forward with it with you. Uh, this week, of course, uh, tomorrow morning, Thursday morning, is another Torah morning. Uh, and then with the coming of Shavuot, Thursday night, uh, we have a, a service for the holiday in Yisker at 10 a.m. on Friday, and then into Shabbat. And of course, we'll continue with these characteristics this upcoming Sunday. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's stop. Let's see if we can find uh, a meaningful and solid balance this morning as we turn to our prayer for Rifuah our prayer for healing uh, for those who are ill, those who are challenged, uh, those who stand on guard for us. We turn to these traditional words of Rufuah. <laughs> May the one who blessed our ancestors bless and heal all who suffer. May it be the divine will to provide healing and strength. Reveal to us the holiness of life, the wholeness of shalom. And together we say, Amen. And now we turn from our moments of uh, connection and reflection uh, to our moment of memory. And uh, so now we think of those uh, in our circle of family, uh, or our community uh, who died in recent days and weeks. On Shloshim, in the past 30 days, we extend our condolences to the families of Oved Benari, Andrew Kosman, Paula Rich, Susie Matei Veda, Esther Siskind, Cheryl Okorovsky, Irving Coven, Julius Bell, Diane Novak. And we also remember all victims of terror including Amit ben Igal. And on your site on this day, the 4th of Sivan, on the anniversaries of their deaths, we remember Nathan Aber, Bernard D. Altman, Pauline Becker, Jack Dax, Martin Hyman, Sarah Karp Lisbon, Howard Israel Klein, Irving Reisman, Ernest Simon, Florence Singer, Kelly Wartsman. Zichronam Livracha, may their memories be a blessing to us. Our griefs and our sympathies are mingled as together we turn to words sanctified by memory, words glorified by hope in the Kaddish Yatom. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemei rabah, ve'alma divara chirutei ve'amlich malchutei, ve'chayechon ve'yomechon, ve'chaye dechol beit Yisrael, ve'agala u'vizman kari v'imru, amen. Yehe Shme Rabba Mevarach le Alam Ulalme Almaya Yit Barach Vish Tabach Vit Paar Vit Romam Vit Nase Vit Hadar Vit Ale Vit Halal Shme de Kudisha Brihu Le Ela Min Kol Birchata Beshirata Tushbecha Tabenechemata Da Amiran Be Alma Vimru Amen Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shamaya Be Chaim Alenu Be Al Kol Yisrael Bimru, Amen. O se shalom bimrama, kuya se shalom, alenu val ko Israel, bimru, Amen. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn and bring strength and comfort to all who remember, and together we say, Amen. Bokir Tov, I hope it is a, a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day outside. I hope we can have a, a beautiful, spiritually restful day inside and enjoy everything we can on this lovely Wednesday morning. Okay, Tom.